come earlier is because my sister just had a little baby, and so I, and so I, you know, anybody who's ever been in my life, they know if a baby comes through, then everybody should just go home, because I'm gonna play with the baby for about three or four hours, and then you can come back and we can take a picture. But uh, yeah, yeah, so my niece was born just a few months ago, and they live in Stockholm, so I haven't been able to, to meet her yet, so, so, uh, so I went there, and, and, uh, and we went to uh, Norway, and, and we skied, or at least I did, and uh, yeah, and I had a great time. Excuse me, I had a great time. I promise that was just water. I don't start drinking until at least for another 20 minutes. Well, that will be halfway through the panel, so... Absolutely. Well, we got the whiskeys coming. Oh, but there you go. There we go. Now we're talking. Oh. Uh, right, a little bit of admin first. If you have a question for Kari, Cooper is on his way, eventually. Uh, but if you have a question, we have some lovely ladies... Or if you've got a question for Greg. Exactly. For so, so where, where were you brought up? I was brought up in Croydon, which is a few miles... You want from Croydon? All right, we got you want from Pearly? No. Oh well. Never mind. All right. Well, that went downhill quickly. Really? All right. So we're going to go back to the normal way of doing things, uh, which is uh, you guys ask me questions that I can't answer. Let's see. Um, am I going to die next episode? Okay. Don't tell anybody. Okay. Big scoop. Big scoop. How dare you? Well, on that, I think. I speak for us all, but I'm quite glad that we didn't see you on a pint this week. Wait, hold on, has everybody seen oh, sorry, last week's show? I keep I'm sorry, doing this. There's somebody over there that's like, that's so upset. They're like, oh my god! I thought you were gonna die! Guys! Ah. I haven't seen it yet! I just thought I'd come to this convention where everyone else has seen it. Yes, no, I was very, uh, I was very excited. Okay, well you plug your ears. We're about, everybody else is about to talk. Okay, yeah, no, I was I was very excited to uh, to to miss out. There was uh, there, because there's always like uh, like like 13 year old boys, 13, 14, 15, and they'll come up to me and they'll say, "I know how you're gonna die," <laughs> and I was and and, uh, and it was all I could. You know, I had to hold it in for months because I was like, "No, you don't." You have no idea. I'm not gonna die. You have to go to school tomorrow, and I get to stay home. <laughs> but I couldn't say that, so I was just like, well, it's a dumb man. You never know. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen! Take her out there, everybody! Ladies and gentlemen! Everybody's best right hand man, Cooper Andrews! Come out for him! Now! Now the festivities can begin. <laughs> so, what would you talk about? Uh, well, we found out uh, where Greg was from, and there are several people spotted in the audience who are from there, although uh, not from the, the tinier part of town, because nobody liked that. Nobody liked yeah, that. Yeah, and, and then, uh, oh, I hate it. Yes, yes. Yes. And then we heard that there's this one lady who hasn't seen last week's episode. And oh, she, yeah. And she doesn't want us to oh, talk about my it. God. Exactly. All right. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, yeah, she just keeps on going. Yeah, I, I told her she better leave. We're about to talk about it. It's like the first thing I want to say. Exactly. I know. I know. I know. I know. We're all upset about so and so and who's it was it that died. That's the, that's that's as specific as we can get apparently. Apparently so. On the panel. That's right. So um so yeah so that's pretty much what's been going on. Um, I, I, I've been, I've just been hugging people and kissing babies. How about you? Uh, I think I pet a lot of dogs. Okay. Yeah. Um, I thought about eating fruit, but the spoon wasn't ah, stabbable in my hands. Yeah, right. yeah, I can't trust my hands right now. The utensils at the conventions—they're—they're, they're, you know, you never know. But yeah, it was. Uh, did you get how many how many uh, Instagram uh, messages do you get where they're like, "You're gonna die." All the time. All hey, the time. Well, yeah, yeah. You die. Even after, wait, hold oh, earmuffs. Even though I didn't die this last time, you know, they're still like, they're, 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 they're still just sure that I'm going to die any minute. Like, like I'm going to die between the shows, like a Shakespeare play. You know, and, and, some, and somebody, you're just going to run in and tell Carol, you know. Big T is dead. 
But that must be great for you, Joe. Cooper, sorry. <laughs> Keep doing it. It happens. Yeah, it does. Because you have no idea where you're going, because you are completely show original. So no one can go, I know how you're going to die, because no one knows how you're going to die. Or because he's die. never going to die. Jerry <laughs> will never die. I will, I will run rough shot over this town for the next day. I'm safe. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I do have to ask you, but have you tried a crumble since you've been over here? There have been a lot of foods I've tried that I don't know the names of. A crumple, I feel like I would remember. I had a pasty for the first... Is it patsy? A pasty? A pasty. A pasty. I said I saw Ian McKellen in his pants the other day, and Aaron goes, oh, that means underwear. I was like, no. Pants means pants. No, no, no. Well, I was well lucky you got away with that. So it's Patsy's? Pasty. 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 Well, I had three of them. <laughs> they were all delicious. I didn't need the next two, but I did it anyway. All right, so somebody's going to have to, have to get this man a crumble at some point. A crumble is essentially an English cobbler, so I, I think you need to try one while you're over here. Yeah, would you guys recommend it? Crumbles? That was like a... Ah, it's making noises. <laughs> Somebody just ran out of here to go make you a, 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 a crumble. A pasty a, a pas a crumble. A pasty crumble. A pasty crumble. <laughs> do, we have, do we have a microphone in the audience? Where's our microphone? Oh, it is over There's there! A microphone. Are you just going to give it away? Who wants this microphone? So, uh, not Ten dollars go to once. Do we want to bring the microphone in the middle and then we can line up behind? Or are there two mics? Is there another? There is another one over here. Sorry, I've got lights in my mouth. I mean, eyes. we got three days before the end of the show, and, and I'm not going to be able to answer any of these questions. <laughs> um, shall we start over here? What's your name? Where are you from? Hi, Kari. Hi, Cooper. My name Hi, is... Hi, where are you? I'm over here, too. Hi. Oh, there you are. Hi. <laughs> um, my name is Tishon. I'm from Florida. I came here to see Andy, but... He That's so crazy. You know, we were in Florida not too long ago. Yes. I appreciate the commitment. <laughs> You were like, Orlando's too easy for me. Yeah. I'm here for Andy. I'm, I'm a, okay, I hear you. I hear you. Well, you just looking for Andy? I'm just on the street? I was you just in Trafalgar Square and screaming for Andy? On a hope Lord. and a prayer. Andy! Wow, that was crazy. Oh, that was almost as loud as this lady. I'm sorry, you had a question. I did. I apologize. No worries. Thank you guys both for coming. Hi, Cooper. Um, my question is to Kari. Now, Michelle, if I'll never let you ask it. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Go. Michelle's the leader of Alexandria, and the king runs the kingdom. He's the leader. My question is, why did the king accept that charter from Tara, knowing that she stole it from Michelle? Michelle worked so hard on it. She lost so much, she offered for the kingdom to stay at Alexandria, gave the kingdom supplies. Oh, oh you're trying to make me feel guilty? I am. Are you I'm, trying to make me feel guilty? I'm sorry, guilty? I'm sorry you know what? Kari. It's the first time that if somebody's come at me like that, and, yes. and honestly, I can, I can tell you that now hearing your perspective, I feel better about stealing it. You know, you, you know why? Because she was sitting around not doing anything with it. And collected dust at the collected kingdom dust, as well. For six years. There, she was just shaving the side of her head, stewing. <laughs> I was so, like, how dare you shave off half your dreadlocks? She looks hot And not hell. help anybody when they come to town. So, you know, so no, so I don't feel guilty. I feel great about that. it. Having said all that, Kari. Yes. Don't you think it would have been a better approach had you approached Michelle and said, hey... I got this charter, Tara brought me. I think it would be appropriate if you returned it back to her and then when everyone decided to come I, together, no nope. that way. Yeah, I know it's a nope here. There, so, I, I hear each one of your the little pieces of questions, I was hearing nope, uh-uh. So, so nope. the king is fine with that? The king was fine with it. Okay. Like, you know why? Because he brought it out and she didn't seem upset. She seemed kind of excited. She was like, wow, that thing I worked so hard yeah, on like, that wow. I forgot all about. I was wondering where that was for the last six years. 
back to it. She chopped a few kids and, you know, exactly. forgot about it. You know she what? had other things on her mind. We kingdoms got this. We're all right. Whenever you go dark beta on a bunch of children, you know, you kind of you kind of lose sight of the charters and things. Yeah. She you had know. to grow up and can't yeah. make it any better. But those children in the corn, they, they deserve that. They did. They, need to, they, yeah, they need to calm did. down. That was the one time everybody was like, all of those children? You just met, did that to those children? They were like, yeah, yeah, they deserve that. Yeah, they had to go. She had yeah, to take had to. RJ. You couldn't put you those know. kids in time out. You know, you couldn't make them no, just write, I will not murder people on the chalkboard. <laughs> you had to go ahead and take care of those children. She had to do what she got to do. Do what you got to do. And we had to do what we had to do. Yeah. Which was steal the charter steal the and then charter. return it six years later. Well, I'm glad that you guys did come together and find it, but that was not a good look, King. I feel good about it. I, I think, think I think it was a, I think it worked for the best. I know. She because Michonne was turning down turning down everybody. So you know what? But for that question, it. you get one of Michonne's dreadlocks that she cut off and left on the floor. See? Oh, you're happy about that now. You would have stolen <laughs> okay. that dreadlock. Yeah. You would have stolen that still dreadlock. Too, okay. And you would have kept it. Say, all right, there you go. Well, I'm so glad that we were able to, to help you with that question. I think she's still upset. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, we'll see you back in Orlando or Tampa. Orlando. Orlando, the Abbey All right, who do we have over here? Please. She looks, she looks Disney like to me. Everybody's afraid to ask a question now. Hello. Just, um, Hello. Hi. Wait, were you just using vowels, or you need to throw some consonants in there so that I can I can formulate a question? So um, I want to know: Do you, I apologize in advance if this has been covered in like, in other interviews? Um, do you personally like find you've been desensitized to horror from like working on The Walking Dead? Or like, do you still enjoy horror? Do you find like you watch it and you're like, oh, I know how they did that, and oh, I know how they did that? Or do you still enjoy it? I sleep in pretty close proximity my entire life with near a sword. Like my entire life, there's been a sword probably within like a yard from me, or a knife, or something. Has it made me more scared or less scared? It's made me more uh, prepared because now the knife or sword is one foot away from me. I'm still scared. I'm scared all the time. I hate scary movies, but I love scary movies. A good scary movie I absolutely love, and working on The Walking Dead has not helped at all. I, I still I still wake up crying after after a good horror movie. I'm uh, I'm still working up the uh, like the gumption to go see Us. Hell, I haven't seen it yet. That's how scared I am. I'm still trying to work up to see a movie that like came out a year and a half ago. Us looks amazing. I know everybody's telling me, but I'm scared of clowns, even when they don't have teeth like that. You know. Freaks me out. That's why I don't go to the circus anymore. I get phone calls at three in the morning. It tells me what movie he's from. I tell him it's not real. He goes, dude, it is real. And I go, oh, I didn't know that. Now I am scared too. See, exactly. Yeah, I'm still scared. It hasn't helped at all. So um, there, there you go. I recommend The Ritual. It's very good. Okay, I will check that out. I will check that out. I will enjoy it. And, and, uh, and I'll call you in the middle of the night. I look forward to that. Awesome. That call. Lovely. Thank you. Let's have one from over here. What's your name and what's your question? Hi, I'm Caroline from the Isle of Wight. Uh, my question is to the King. Do you think that Carol is really the woman for you, considering that no children ever live to become adults? <laughs> you know what? I was never into paying for college tuition, <laughs> you know, so I think the king was kind of, you know, that, that was his whole thing. He was like, raise them to 17 or 18, and then right before you got to write that check to the college, you know, she's going to make sure, you know, Carol's dick, you know, the cookies, something, they're just never going to make it, you know? He's more of a, like, from birth to 17 or 18 kind of fella. You know, so so in that way, I think she's the perfect one for uh, for the king. Okay, 
Is you. that morbid enough for you? <laughs> hey, thank you. You're welcome. I kind of have an extension on that. How much do you think Carol and Ezekiel are real with each other? Because they're both very good actors. And how real is their relationship? Yeah, but you know, you can't bullshit a bullshitter. And they're both bullshitters to a certain extent. So, so I think they can, they read each other pretty well, you know? They can, uh, they can act for other people, but I, I think they're pretty good at reading each other, you know? Which is, I think, why it works, you know? Cobra Strike. Cool, let's have a question over here, please. What's your name, what's your question? Hi, my name's Caitlin. Um, my question is, what was your favorite part of season nine to film? I, mean, I liked our, our whole movie, the movie stuff. That was fun. I, I like I like that because that was the first time Kingdom got to do Kingdom stuff. Um, when you first meet us, you know, we're already like dealing with Negan. Then season eight, we're in the war. Beginning of this season, we're building a bridge. And then uh, you know, towards the end, we're finally like, what does the Kingdom do when they're not helping other people? They are. We're planting <laughs> pomegranate trees. We're finding moving bulbs. We're doing all the crap in the apocalypse everybody else thinks is a stupid idea. And we're doing it because that's how you live life. You know what? I, I just, I spent the last four days skiing. You know what skiing is? It's a stupid thing to do. <laughs> There's no reason. There was no reason for me to go up to that mountain. There was no reason for me to strap sticks to my feet and, try, and, and, and go down it except for it makes me happy. And that's what you do. You don't do shit in this life because it's like the absolute necessity to make yourself smile, to make yourself, you know, like, like, feel like life is worth living. You do stupid shit that there's no reason to do except that it makes you happy. And that's the kingdom. And that's what we're trying to teach everybody. I just made that shit up on the fly, but I believe it. I figured that was a monologue from the finale. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> cool, lovely. Thank you. Let's have one from over here. What's your name? What's your question? Hello, hi. My name's Eamon. I'm from Stone Market. I've got a question for both of you. Um, the first question is to the king. If you could uh, replace Carol, who would you replace her with? Dude, I, first of all, I think you should watch your back on the way out of here. <laughs> Literally, oh, there, there were there were so many eyes that just went. <laughs> Replace Carol, and, um, and and just so you know, I'm not going to answer that question because I don't want to follow me out of here. I'm not replacing Carol with anybody. Okay, that it, it was hard enough to get that woman to come around in the first place. Okay, I had to throw pomegranates, tigers, everything. So, so yeah, yeah, so um, you, why don't you ask uh, Cooper a question? Okay. And, and uh, yeah, be real careful on your way out. I will do. For Jerry, as, just, as a great sidekick, if you could take over the kingdom and kill the king, would you? <laughs> I, think, I think you should try asking that first question again. <laughs> <laughs> if I could kill the king, would I? Hell no. That's a, that's a huge hell no. I would, everyone's like, you know, if the king dies, you can, uh, maybe you can be king. It's like, I, you know, if, if anything ever like that happened, I don't think Jerry would just be like, oh, I'm king now. There's, you know, he, he's, nah, hell no. Nah. Did you not watch some guy, man? There was all. Awesome. Can we get a round of applause for that episode? Because that was just phenomenal. You know, I chopped a human in half, not a walker, true. a living being. Just to establish how happy that act was. I get, you know what? I know what you're all thinking. And no, we're not gonna do like an Orient Express, uh, what, what, a murder on the Orient Express type of thing where we all have a conspiracy to kill this dude, okay? <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Just let him go. Just let him leave. You owe me one, man. So you owe me one. All right. Let's get a question over here. Let's try to cleanse the palate. <laughs> if you think that question is my when to hear my... Oh God, how old are you? How old are you? I'm 17. 17, okay, this, this, this 
might work. He likes he look, Yeah, that's the good age for the kingdom. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Have you, have you met Carol? <laughs> Not yet. Um, first of all, they say it's cool, but that's the one badass that you've got on there. So. Um, but my question is to you, Luca. Um, do you think you're more fit to be a king than Ezekiel is? You guys are killing me today. <laughs> Literally, I just, I just made it past like this, like this crucial part in the in the story of The Walking Dead, and now, and, and now you're trying to get Jerry to kill me. <laughs> What's going on? What have I done to you? Thank you. It was, it was um, what I can't. No, there's no. It's, I don't. I don't put those thoughts. I, I, I treat. I treat them really well. Yeah. So, um, okay. Well, as far as as far as a, a, I think a good leader goes, it's not. It's someone who's willing to do. I mean, everyone's thinking. I mean, the fact that the kingdom follows what he does. That it's not like it was his idea to do a movie ball, but then all of us were like, uh, okay. I mean, everyone that was there was willingly doing it. Um, and, and to me, that is a good leader because it's, uh, you know, a song that everyone follows. And I don't think anyone in the apocalypse that's lived this long is dumb enough to follow someone dumb enough. No, but you know what? I also think that, that, uh, that Jerry would be... Uh, I'm also really loyal, though. So. A great leader. <laughs> I, think, I think Jerry would be a great leader. You know? a bridge. Because, uh, because he does, because he's, he's, uh, he's not leading to lead, he would be leading to serve. You know? So, uh, and, uh, and, and Jerry is... He's, um, I mean, he's already kind of the right-hand man, so he's just a step away. I mean, I guess, I guess the queen's got to leave again, and then maybe, you know, but, you know, if he had to step in, I think Jerry would do a good job. Thank you. Not happening. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. I'm just saying. Cobbler would be just falling from the sky. <laughs> Babies being had left and right. You know. All right, let's 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 see how, okay, we got Carol over here. Save yeah. us, Carol. Hi, I'm Queen Carol, but you can call me your majesty. <laughs> All right, no pomp and circumstance there. All right, here we go. <laughs> um, okay, so she was death scene. Um, how awkward was it to film because obviously you didn't have a real tiger? Was it some guy dressed in a suit like? No, no, it was, the only time there was a guy dressed in, in a suit is when when Shiva was actually jumping on somebody and they needed to, to feel the weight of something on him. So, uh, so we never actually were in a scene where there was like a dude in a blue suit, you know, sitting next to me. I don't think I could do that. I'd literally be like, you're gonna have to leave. So fortunately, we didn't have to deal with that. But, um, but uh, yeah, yeah, I, I think just as an actor, I think all of us kind of started out just as kids growing up, pretending things were there that weren't there, you know? And, uh, and, and as an actor, you just never lose that, you know? And, uh, and, and that's, that, that's what I used as far as, uh, as Shiva was concerned. And, and the thing about that episode is that not only did I use, lose Shiva, I lost, I lost most of the kingdom. And, uh, and to me, that's what Shiva already, always represented, you know? Was the, the kingdom was this light you know, in a dark, dark world. And, uh, and Shiva was this rare, beautiful creature in a dark, dark world. And so, um, and so when we lost all of those, those extras and all of those actors that, um, that we uh, had been working with for a year, you know, that I wasn't gonna be able to see anymore. So when I saw Shiva down, I was really, I was seeing all of those people, all of those faces. And, uh, and so that's what made it real for me, you know? So that's how I went about it. Everybody's, every, everybody quietly walks up to me and is like, I have a confession. I cried when the, when the, the big cat died. And the truth is, we all did. We all did. Every, everybody who's like, well, I didn't cry. That's a lie. They went to the bathroom. They closed the door. They locked it. And they sobbed like a toddler. They sobbed. We all did. It's okay. It's all right. The cat was real to me, too. Thank you, Carol. Thank you for getting us back on the right track. Should we have one from over here? What's your name and what's your question? Hi, I'm Mia. Okay, before you start, just put the bat down. Just put it down. 
Okay. Now tell me your name again. Nika. Oh my God. <laughs> you are your own person. No. Okay. All right. Come on. I can't wait for this question any longer. Give it to me. If both of you had to come up with one word to end the apocalypse, what would it be? To end the apocalypse, or like our time in the apocalypse? The apocalypse. Okay. Oh. If we can end the apocalypse, <laughs> I would do it with like with like a, 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 a like a like a Britain's Got Talent type type uh, type talent show. You know what I mean? And we would scour the apocalypse for the greatest singers and jugglers that have yet to be eaten. And we will bring them together. And, we will, have them, and we will have them sing and juggle at, at, at a volcano. And all of the zombies would come there and fall into that, that volcano. And that's how the zombie apocalypse would end. And it would be glorious. And Simon Cowell would say, this is good. <laughs> and that's, that's how, I mean, obviously, what an odd question. That's how everybody sees it. So there you go. With, with Simon Cowell, you know, with his bloody white shirt. Or is it black? Is it black? It's, it's usually it's black, black, right? Okay. It's deep, whatever it is. It's, it's a deep beat. Yeah, he's got a little beat. Exactly. Maybe he'll do a, another episode of the, the car show. Uh, what is it? Top Gear. Yeah, he does another one of those. Yeah, do that now. Yeah. Yeah, do that now. So, so Cooper, can you beat that? <laughs> I, well, it's, actually, it's funny because I was thinking of uh, having a rock concert on the volcano yeah, yeah. and then just play really loud music and bring all the walkers into a lava pit. I really just want to see lava on the Walking Dead. Is that so hard to ask? Yes. Yeah. Lava. Lava and Led Zeppelin. That's all we want. That's it, nothing else. Yep. Lovely. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah, who do we have? I want some questions. Hi, my name's Steph. Um, I'm from London. Um, I've got a question that might not be answered with a straight answer. It's more giving you the yeah, chance right. to be creative. <laughs> um, so we've all rocked up and we're outside Alexandria, the hilltop, Oceanside, um, and we are crucial to survival and you obviously want us to come to the kingdom, okay? So if you were given a minute to convince us all to stay at the kingdom, what would you do? And if you could demonstrate that, that would be great. Would it involve one of these legendary handstands? Oh, boy. I don't have, I can't even stand stand <laughs> at the moment. But now that we're sitting, this is bad. I, you know, I, I don't know if I what would, what would I say? Yeah, we have lots of extra armor, thanks to our friends from Season 8, some holes in them. Um, we've got lots of cobbler. Cobbler, pomegranates, tiger memorials. What else do you want? And we got a movie theater. Boom! There you go. Sold. Done! Yes, yes. Absolutely. We got Wallace and Gromit playing on a loop. Come on! Actually, speaking of the movies, whose choice was it to have that cartoon on on show in the movie theater? Angela Kang, my okay. friend, Angela Kang. Whose yeah. choice in the show was it? Uh, I, I just think, um, I just love that, that it had this uh, kind of, you know, wolf, you know, wolf in, in sheep's clothing thing happening. And, uh, and here comes this uh, lady who cut off somebody's hair. Not cut off their hair, but cut off their hair. And then put it on the, oh, you guys. The one of the things that you don't even know about the, from the episode is that, is that underneath the, uh, the hat that, uh, that, that Samantha Morton was wearing and the, uh, and the, the wig, you, you never saw it because she always had the hat on, but there was this tiny line of blood that was going on. It was so freaking creepy. I swear to God. I, I just I just want you guys to know that it was there. Because it just makes it that much worse. But oh, she looked so cute in that in that little dress. And then I looked a little closer and she had a line of blood going across her forehead. <laughs> oh man, you gotta love this show. It's so creepy, I don't know what to do. 
That didn't answer the question at all, did it? It's fine. That's all right. It. Thank you. Thank you. Let's have a question from over here, please. Hiya, fellas. Uh, I'm Dan from Liverpool. Um, it's a question for the pain of you. Um, in the last episodes, you played a movie. But my question to you is, if you had the choice to watch one movie, if it was your choice, what would you both watch? I, I just watched it the other day, and True Lies. I think it's like, I think there's, you either have T2, True Lies, or Predator for like the best action film. But I like True Lies because you get all of everything. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go two lies this year. I don't know what's gonna happen next year if this question's asked again, but right now, I can watch two lies once a week for 15 weeks. The thing that, the, the, the movie that came to mind is The Big Lebowski. I would watch The Big Lebowski over and over and over again. And the thing about The Big Lebowski is, I always fall asleep before it's over. So I just got to start it over and watch it and start to watch it again. But yeah, yeah, just a uh, uh, children present. I can't, okay, yeah, yeah, I can't, I can't talk about the big house. I, I dressed like the dude for one Halloween, and that was from pulling clothes from my, my closet. There was no, like, I have exactly that. Uh, I have exactly that. Okay, I'm ready for Halloween. Oh, the, oh, the, the Princess Bride, that'd be good. Yeah, I was thinking that too. The Shawshank Redemption, you know, because, um, I don't know, because Morgan Freeman made, you know, you know, calms me down. Um, yeah, okay, that's too many movies. There's too many movies. I, I can't, uh, I can't come up with just one. The Dark Crystal? That's a good one. Man, now I'm just pulling stuff from my childhood. This lady just got bored. She was like, she's just naming off movies. I'm leaving. She was like, I can name movies, too. Exactly. That means something to me. I'm not going to sit here for this. Here you talk about the Muppet movie. That's another good one. Yeah, let's know that one. That had a lot of celebrity cameos in it. <laughs> let's have a question from over here, please. What's your name and what's your question? Hi, I'm Emma. I was wondering if you and Jerry had uh, your own day out together, what would you do? You know what? I would love for us to recreate like Ferris Bueller's Day Off, but in the apocalypse. You know, like, like uh, you know, we go to the museum, we kill some zombies. You know, we sit down in a nice restaurant, killing some zombies, bringing sandwiches. Yeah. You know, we we uh, we steal his dad's car. You know, we we uh, we skip school. I think it would be I think it would be an awesome time. I can't think of anything better than that. That sounds actually great, yes. Then I could drive the car off a garage, and it'll be great. Yeah. Lovely, thank you. Over here, what have we got? What's your name, what's your question? Hey guys, my name's Megan, and my question is, what's the most difficult part about playing your characters on the show? Um, I, think we, I, I think for everyone, it's weather and our long, our long sweaty clothes um, is a hard part, but I think that's just for everybody. Character-wise, I don't know. It was I get to show up happy, so my kind of process of getting to work is listening to like some happy music. I don't know what the lyrics are. I'll just bob my head along, and then I I just show up, and I always kind of get to show up with a, a good day. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, I think the hardest part is saying goodbye to to incredible uh, people that, that I... Now you make them think of Thank love. you. Thank you. Yeah, great. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, fantastic. Great. Yeah, go on, go on. Sorry. Sorry. I'll you care say, about people. Go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Cooper cares about people, too. No, but but it's the... You know, you... you uh, this show has done an incredible job of not just finding really incredibly talented people that, to work on the show, but they're also equally lovable. Like, like, uh, like just amazing human beings to be able to, and when you're, when you're working 14, sometimes 18 hours a day on, uh, on, on telling the story, you're going to get tired of people. Trust me, you're going to get tired of everybody. And, uh, but you don't get tired of these people 
They are they, they are just some of the most wonderful people to hang out with. And, uh, and thank God that we have things like like uh, Walker Stalker so that uh, so that I don't have to say goodbye. You know, but but you don't get to see them at, on a on a, as regular basis as um as you would have. I mean, uh, uh, Caitlin, you know, who who um who's gone, you know, I, I mean, she she was I, I saw when she was like a young girl. We all did, you know. And then I get to meet her and see her grow into this amazing woman. And uh, and and, uh, and yeah, yeah, she dies on the show, but you know, I don't get to see see her as often. And that just that just tears me up inside, honestly. You know. You know, I mean, uh, you know, there, there are there are t tears for for Enid, you know, but uh, but but there's there's tears for for Alana for me, and, and tears for for uh, for Matt and for, for for Caitlin. You know, that to me is the hardest part of the show. Most times you get on on a on a show that's as popular as this, everybody stays on it until the show's over. This time you just never know. You know, we don't know what's going to happen on Monday. You know, when we watch this show, well, I do, but you don't, you don't know who we're going to lose on Monday. And it's, are you uh, saying we are going to lose someone? I'm not saying you are, I'm not saying you aren't. I'm just here to make your life miserable for the next 48 hours. Cool. We have time for only one more question, I'm afraid, so make it a good one. in the world, where would it be? Hawaii, there's, we're going to pick a place, lots of fish, eat from the trees, nice beaches. Hawaii, either that or Buckingham Palace. You know, I just like, I just think it's roomy. I feel like, you know, I was like a different bedroom every day. I just worked my way around it. You know, it already has that kind of royal feel. They got their own carriages, I'm down to that. They've got a livery stable. I like horses. So how is the palace? Lovely. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, by the way, I don't know if you can hear this, but um, we've yet to get an invitation. We are, you know, royalty in town, just saying. Queen Mum, you're out there. If you can Absolutely. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. If you do have any more questions for Cooper or for Kari, you can go and find them. Their tables are both on this side. Oh. We're over there somewhere. We're over there somewhere. Um, can we have a massive round of applause for these guys? Thank you. Oh. Oh, oh, oh.